Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Spartan Stadium in Lima, Ohio, where this afternoon we've got a rare Saturday afternoon matchup between the visiting Bishop Hartley Hawks and the Lima Central Catholic Thunderbirds. I'm Garrett C. Ryan. I'm joined with Scott Mag, and we'll bring you all the action today here from Spartan Stadium. And Scott, it's hard to believe that already after tonight, after this afternoon's game, we'll be halfway through the high school football season. Yeah, that's crazy. You just think that it seemed like it just started. Wow, it's we're halfway through, and you know uh, some of the uh, the cream of the crop are coming to the to the top. You know, as far as how they're playing, and they're all clicking on all cylinders. And when you take a look at both of these squads here, both of them really kind of want to run the football more than they want to be forced to throw the football. And you've got a couple of good athletes on each side who are going to run the football for LCC. Carson Parker is going to get a bulk of the carries, the quarterback. And then Deontay Hubbard for Bishop Hartley is going to tote the rock a lot this afternoon as well. Yeah, absolutely. We talked to the coaches before the game. And, and Hartley, if he said it once, he said it ten times that we have to be aware of the uh, LCC quarterback at all times. they got to know where he's at and what he's He's going to be doing so they're really really going to be keying on him he's got 639 yards on the season so far so they know by watching tape they got a key on him and and you like you mentioned earlier they got uh, Deontay Hubbard who is a he is a specimen and he is a very 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 good running back so both teams understand what they need to do and and uh, you know coach Paldy again he took to him in pregame was talking to me and said that we have to be, you know, everybody has to be aware of what they need to do in their job. And that's because of what Hubbard can do on the offensive end. He's got to make sure his defense is locked in and, and playing assignment football so he can't slip one away and make a 30, a five yard gain into a 30 or 40 yard game. Bishop Hartley is going to kick off to start this afternoon's ball game. So LCC will start with the football. Their offensive line looks like this Tyler Shipman, Chris Serkovich, Buddy Bryant, James Patton, and Jacob Lock are the offensive linemen. We mentioned the quarterback, Carl. Carson Parker, running backs Gabe Sierra, Payne Cutlip, wide receiver Matthew Quatman, Sound with Jenny, and Matt Sierra are the starting 11 on offense for the T-Birds as the Bishop Hartley Hawks have the football teed up, ready to kick it away is Warren Markwood. Hartley 1-3 coming into this afternoon's contest. A couple of tough-fought games against Sunbury Big Walnut, Harvest Prep, and Canal Winchester, and they got a win against Cincinnati McNicholas last week as LCC catches the football and will begin tonight, this afternoon's football game with a big return out to the 39-yard line, as I believe that's Payne Cutlip on the return there for the T-Birds. Excuse me, that's Matthew Quatman. Yeah, he did a great job of waiting, setting up his blockers kind of he had five six guys in front of him he kind of slowed himself down and then they got to the hole and then he exploded through the hole got all the way out to that 40 yard line great job by Quatman to, to set up his blockers there so the T-Birds will begin at their own uh, at the 40 yard line we'll call it as Carson Parker will trot the offense out onto the field and LCC, as we mentioned, Bishop Hartley's record, the T-Birds, two and two, have turned the ball football over eight times the last two weeks. Scott Pulte said that's a big key for them this week. They sent Quatman in motion. Parker up the gut. He is swallowed up by that Bishop Hartley offensive, or defensive line, excuse me. Donovan Davis, the first on the stop there for the Hawks. Yes, they they, <laughs> they were key, and they knew where he was coming. Also, Isaac Azudu was uh, right there as well, the 6'3", 290-pound senior. Uh, he's got some... Division two offers, um, so he can get to the quarterback and stop the run. Uh, he's going to be a handful of looking at him. <laughs> he's a big man there, out there. There are a couple of big guys yes. out there. Also for uh, Bishop Hartley, number 11, their uh, linebacker, Anthony Murphy, has committed to play football at the Air Force Academy. So a couple of uh, impressive defenders here on the defensive side for the Hartley Hawks. Parker slings it out to Matt Sierra here along the near sideline. Gets to the 42-yard line. Gained it just a couple, but a nice, easy pitch and catch there on first down. Yeah, Hogan from his safety or cornerback position. I don't know, he's kind of playing like a deep safety there a little bit. He closed in a hurry and, and made that a short game because they looked like they had something on that. They tried. Mark 
So an incomplete pass there for LCC on third and long, and that's going to bring out the punt unit for the T-Birds. Carson Parker, also the quarterback, also the punter for the guys in blue. Yeah. So a good three and out by the Hawks defense, but uh, unfortunately if you're a T-Birds fan, not quite the start that you wanted. They got such a good job on the kickoff and only get like one and a half yards. So Parker back deep to punt. Takes the chest high snap, will roll, and does oh, put a wow. foot into it. Bounces out of bounds at the 20-yard line. So nice field position flip there for, for LCC. Yeah, good job by Quatman to get that ball out there. You know, I'm, and, and maybe this slow starter um, not used to playing at 4 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. You know, this is more like a, a college time game, and it has a little bit of a college feel to it, like a small college game. And to me, I think it's pretty cool, something neat and, and unique that that these schools can play on a Saturday afternoon. We kind of touched on that a little bit in the pregame. And you don't get that opportunity all too often. You know, other yeah. than week one, you're not really playing in the in the sunshine. Sun, yeah, absolutely. Not, not something you got to worry about, shielding your eyes while catching the football yeah. or anything like that. The Hartley Hawks offense comes out onto the field. So they'll send Ryan Perry in motion in the backfield. Peyton Underwood turns around, hands off to Deontay Hubbard. And Hubbard past the first line out to the 35-yard line. So a gain of 10. And that's going to move the chains on the first play of the game for the Hartley Hawks. And you can see. He hit that hole in a hurry, and a good job by Carson Parker to hold on, or he would have been gone. I tell you, they had a little hole, and he hit that, like one foot in the ground, one cut back, and he was through that hole quickly. Perry in motion. He'll take the handoff on the jet sweep. Perry patiently waits to the outside, gains about three or four yards before he's shoved out at the 40-yard line. Good job by the T-Birds to get that to force and not, will not let him to get outside and and kind of contain the blockers and make him try to go back inside and they didn't want to do that uh, because that's where the, all the uh, T-Birds were coming. But great job by them, that defense, right defensive end and linebackers out there. LCC's defensive line looks like this. Jacob Block, James Patton, Gianni McKee, and Cole Gross. Linebackers Matt Sierra, Gabe Sierra, and Ethan Frankhauser. As Underwood slings to Perry along the near sideline. Perry in the open field, crosses the midfield stripe. Shoved out of bounds by Carson Parker who makes the gets the tackle. But another pitch and catch there by the Bishop Hartley Hawks. You, you can tell uh, Bishop Hartley, a lot of their game plan so far is trying to get their speed guys in space, right? They want to hit the quick hitter with their running back, and both times they want the jet sweep and the little swing pass to get their guys into space. I think that's where they think they got the advantage today. Defensive backfield for LCC, Sal Jenny, Matthew Quatman, Carson Parker, and Payne Cutlip. There's Joey Wooten in motion. He'll take the handoff this time, but he's brought down from behind. A big play there made by Jacob Block, and that's a tackle for loss for the big fella. Yeah, it's a good job by the coaching staff, the defensive coach staff. They, they blitzed uh, up the middle. They brought their two linebackers up the middle to force uh, some action, and uh, they were able to get to the running back. Second and 11 upcoming here. First really uh, big stop there by the LCC defense to kind of push Hartley back just a little bit and get them off schedule. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see if they come again. Pressure looks kind of looking like it. They'll turn and pitch to Hubbard. Makes one man miss. Gets to the 40-yard line. Oh, Can't break tackle. a second tackle yeah. as Quatman gets a big play in the open field, and he's a little slow to get up. Yeah, might have he might have got a rug burn there on his arm. I think he's uh, looking. Maybe he's bleeding or something. I don't know, but... So that'll bring up third and long here for the Hawks, but that was a nice open field Absolutely. tackle there by Guatman. He seen it, read it, and went flying up there and did a great job. Yeah, it looks like it's yeah, a carpet burn, yep. He's got a, he, <laughs> that never feels good either. No, it doesn't get sweat in there and that burns. It's gonna burn all game. Wooten in motion once again for the Hawks. Underwood under center, he'll turn and pitch. This one goes to Robert Lathan. Lathan in the open field, he gets, the first down and more brought down just shy of the 20-yard line, a gain of uh, 13 there for the Hawks to pick up another first down. Yeah, well, good job by Lathan to get through there. Uh, he was basically hit with about a maybe a five, six-yard gain and end up going another 15 yards after that. Good job by him to run through that tackle, running hard out there. So first and 10 for the Hawks at the edge of the red zone at the 21-yard line. Peyton Underwood, the starting quarterback for Bishop Hartley. Uh, 3,371 yards through the air as he'll turn and hand off to Rory Ralston. Ralston rumbles inside the 10-yard line, is brought down by Carson Parker, but Ralston's first carry does big damage for the Hawks. They're inside the 10-yard uh, line and going to have first and goal. It's a quick, quick hitter there of the fullback up the middle. Did a great job of running through people. 
So first and goal. They'll turn around and hand it off to Lathan. Lathan's second carry of this first quarter. Brought down at the one yard line is Jacob Locke and Gianni McKeon on the stop for LCC. Kind of want to reset the uh, play clock, the official. There they got it. Now we got it. The establishing play. The official says, yes, we, we need to reset the play clock here. Well, they went to 25, they went to 40, then back to 25. And <laughs> Ralston, Lathan in the yeah. backfield. Lathan gets the carry, and he gets the touchdown. touchdown yeah. A two-yard touchdown run by the freshman, Robert Lathan. Gets Hartley on the board first. Yeah, good job, I understand, to go be on to the right side they, with the 290-pound uh, right tackle and the 285 right right guard. So pretty easy pickings. Those two guys were moving the pile, and he just won right behind him, got in the end zone. Smart man. <laughs> it's really when you're a 5'11", 175-pound freshman, right, I'm going to run behind those guys. Those big guys, and I'm going to hide behind them until they, until they move the pile. The extra point, no good, so the score remains 6 nothing. Hartley leads LCC here in the first quarter on WOSN. Gethsemane Cemetery is tonight's scoreboard sponsor. They want to wish the LCC T-Birds good luck in tonight's ball game. T-Birds trail 6-0 on the Gethsemane Cemetery scoreboard after a nine-play 75-yard touchdown run, or touchdown drive, I should say, capped off by a Robert Lathan touchdown run for the Hartley Hawks. And not the, the start that the T-Birds were looking for, I can't no, imagine. It's no, I, I, it started well with the kickoff run, and then it yeah. kind of went south from there, but defensively they got to be able to get up and, and tackle a little bit better than they have. And you see the adjustment from Hartley. Yep. Didn't want Matthew Quatman to have the football, yeah. and they Smart. kick it out of bounds, and so it's going to be pretty good starting field position once again here for the T-Birds. Right. The ball going out of bounds. That should be, what, 35, 40? 35, I believe. Yeah, so the ball yep. spotted at the 35-yard line with 740 yep. to go here in this first quarter. LCC went three and out on that first drive. And it, it's tough. There's some big boys up front there by the uh, Bishop Hartley uh, Hawks there that they, they're going to might have trouble with all game, that they're going to be able to move or at least maybe have a move and then yeah, run behind them or we're opposite there they're going. But unfortunately, like you mentioned, there is an Air Force Academy commit linebacker that's <laughs> in the weeds for them to come, I guess. So Carson Parker lines up with a bunch formation to his left. They'll send Payne Cutlip in motion, and he'll run back the other way. Parker into the open field to the 40, or he's cut down by Raylo Hogan on the stop for the Hawks. Carson Parker, 92 carries on the year, 512 yards on the ground with nine touchdowns. He has uh, been uh, been an explosive runner here for the for the T-Birds in the first half of his junior season. Yes, yes, he has. They sub out. Uh, they sub in a couple uh, quicker guys for linemen. They, the, those big guys that we mentioned earlier that are on the offensive line, they, they play both ways, but they went with uh, number 30, Charlie McCall, and number 62, Caleb Jackson. Quatman in motion. Parker keeps it himself again. Oh, wow. Gets Run, very close to the first down marker. Hard. Did get the first down there. That'll move the chains. So 10 yards there on carries by Carson Parker. Gets the T-Birds their first first down. Yeah. Good job by the T-Bird offensive linemen. They got some push there. They didn't really get that in the first drive. And those guys up front and maybe uh, kind of settling into the game and they got some movement there. And, and the quarterback, once he has a little space, knows what to do with it. LCC turns and looks to the sideline to get further instructions from their coaches here. Let's see. T-Birds get set on first and 10 at the 45-yard line, their own 45-yard line. Parker with Sierra to his left. We'll send Quatman in motion and he'll get the handoff. Quatman goes straight up the middle this time. Good, Good cut. It's a sophomore, gets close to the midfield stripe, a gain of about four and a half there on first down. Yeah, Quatman did a great job. He, he, that was kind of a more of a jet sweep and was supposed to get outside, but seeing that, that the, uh, the Hawks had that one kind of snuffed out a little bit and put his foot in the turf and cut that upfield to get a three or four yard gain there. So LCC content to really take uh, a lot of time here yeah. between snaps. They, you, you don't want to 
give that that Hartley offense any more time with the football than than they're going to get. Well, they, the play clocks. Yeah, I was going to say I don't think the play clocks are working no. anymore. He's stuck on 40. Gabe Sierra gets oh, the handoff this time. Crosses the midfield strike. Brought down at the 47-yard line. A couple of hawks on the play as Rory Ralston makes a stop. But another nice carry there by LCC. will bring up third and short. Yeah. Good job by uh, to set up his blocks. They, you know, they were out there and he did a good job of getting the block and cutting right behind it to get up field for, like you said, three, four yards. Good job. So third and two upcoming. Third and three. Two and a half. We'll, we'll split the difference at third and two and a half here. But another third down here for the T-Birds. They're second of the first quarter. Parker in the shotgun. He'll keep it himself off right tackle. Gets to the 45. Had to get to the 44. So it's going to be fourth and very short for LCC as Anthony Murphy, the Air Force commit at linebacker for Bishop Hartley, makes the stop. Yeah. Uh, half yard. T-Birds, I might go for them. Yeah. Pretty good here today. So fourth, at least this drive. Fourth and one. Upcoming play is the sixth of this drive. Five straight runs to begin their second attempt with the football. It, nonetheless, this long sustained drive keeps that Hawk offense off the field yep. as well. Parker in the shotgun with Gabe Sierra to his left. Sierra doesn't get the handoff. Oh, Parker keeps good, it himself. He's got key. plenty of room. One man to beat, and he does. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. A 45-yard scamper by Carson Parker yeah. has tied this game at 6 on the Gethsemane Cemetery scoreboard. Yeah, great, good, great read. I think that was a, a, a read option there that he could have passed. Handed that one off, but instead he pulls it out of the belly and, and follows his blockers out the right, out the left side, all the way to the end zone. Great read by the quarterback. So Carson Parker's 10th touchdown to scamper of the season has tied us at six with 4.16 to go here in this first quarter. And you're right, Scott, uh, did a nice job of being patient, set up his blockers, and then uh, was able to break a tackle and, and break it for a touchdown. Sure did. Kick is up and a kick is good, and the LCC T Birds have a 7 6 advantage on the Guest 70 Cemetery scoreboard. We'll step aside 7 6 T Birds lead here in the first on WLSN. Spartan Stadium as the LCC T-Birds have a 7-6 advantage over the Bishop Hartley Hawks after a 45-yard touchdown run by Carson Barker, his 10th of the season. And uh, a nice drive put together there by the T-Birds, Scott, where they go six plays and 65 yards. Cap it off of that 45-yard touchdown run by Parker. But uh, that, that's the answer that I think Scott Baltes uh, was looking for after giving up a touchdown on Hartley's first drive. Absolutely. And not only that, but the, it, they ran the football. The clock was moving. They took a big chunk of time off there. Uh, they were moving. You know, I, I think every play was a positive play. So that's kind of what he's looking for, he, having his guys locked in doing assignment football. He was really adamant about that. LCC kicks off his the kick from Michael Tafflinger scooped up by the Hawks. Ryan Perry turns the corner outside. here at the 35 cuts back towards the middle of the field to the 40 before he's brought down. Sal Guccini brings him down for LCC but a nice return there by Ryan Perry of Hartley and that will give them pretty good starting field position for their second drive. Absolutely and, and <laughs> It almost started a little scary because that was almost kicked. He kind of had to reach over his head to catch that one. And most uh, kickoff return guys like to catch it in their belly, but he had that one over his head. But he did a wonderful job of gathering himself and getting outside. Kind of, kind of holding here. So, oh, we got, yeah, we'll have a holding. So then I'll push them back just a little bit. That uh, negates a, a nice return there by Perry. So instead of the ball at the 43-yard line, it's going to be at the 37-yard line. Thirty-five yard line. Yeah, on see if the uh, the T-Birds can adjust a little bit. I think they got to tack a little bit better. Uh, the Hawks ran through them a few times. They got to wrap up and get them down to the ground. Ooh, now they're going to have a motion. <laughs> yeah, they're going to have a little bit of uh, motion there. Yeah. So not the start of the second drive that the Hawks wanted. No. If you're an LCC fan watching us, you're pretty probably pretty happy about this. So right here, Bishop Hartley out of Columbus, the Columbus Catholic League. Only, I think, six schools in the Columbus Catholic League. So this will be the last week of non-conference play here for Bishop Hartley. 
as Peyton Underwood goes back under center and he'll fake the handoff. Nope, we'll give it to Rory Ralston. Thought he He's still the carrying handoff. it, guys. Ralston yep. gets yes. back to the line of scrimmage, the original line of scrimmage, the 35 yard line where just kept those legs churning. Absolutely, but he was hit at the probably the 29 and still got five, six yards just carrying people. So the, the Tebers got to do a better job. They're there, they just got to get them to the ground and they're really kind of struggling on that in the early part of this game. Second and nine upcoming. Send Wooten in motion. And they'll hand off to Robert Lathan. Lathan to the 42-yard line. Gabe Sierra grabs on to make the stop. Matt Sierra, excuse me, grabs on to make the stop for LCC. I, what I'm impressed too is Underwood's ball control, right? He's faking this and that, and he's coming out with, it, with uh, different fakes. And it's got to be very difficult for those defensive linemen for the T-Birds. Third and four here for the Hawks. They'll give it to Wooten on the reverse. Wooten, more of a counter, crosses the midfield stripe but picks up enough for the first down. They turn around and fake the handoff to Lathan and instead give it to Wooten coming up back through the middle of the field there from that wing back spot. That's a nice play and a nice design there on third and short. Yeah, and so far on this drive, they've never you know, he's usually handing off in the second, third, or fourth option. He's faking two or three times before he gives the ball off. Ryan Perry in motion, and he'll get the handoff on the jet sweep. He gets to the outside, turns the corner, and he's got the first down and more. Shoved out of bounds, just shy of the 30-yard line at the 31, where Matthew Quatman able to shove him out of bounds, but they move the chains once again. Yeah, Lauk almost had him from his defensive end position. He just kind of ran past him. He was close. He was about a half step. Just too late getting there. That would have been a great play by him. Unfortunately, he was just a little shy. So already the fifth play of the drive upcoming here for the Hartley Hawks. Four consecutive runs to begin the drive. Peyton Underwood throwing the ball 71 times for the first four weeks of the season as he'll go back under center with the offset eye behind him. Wooten in motion. He'll stop. And they'll hand off to Rory Ralston. Ralston to the 30. Big pile of blue or T birds, excuse me. Push back Ralston on his third carry of the afternoon. That they did a better job that time than not letting him carry him four or five yards as they'd done the previous. So second and eight as we approach two minutes remaining here in the first quarter on the Yosemite Cemetery scoreboard. LCC getting set defensively. So Underwood goes back under center. An eye formation behind him. Wooten in motion. Underwood fakes the handoff and he'll look to throw. Pressured, fires to Wooten at the 15 yard line. Has one man to beat, did he get into the end zone? He might have, yes. Nope, they're looking to each other. Yep, now it's yep. falling. Touchdown. A 30 yard touchdown pass, the first of the season for Peyton Underwood and Joey Wooten gives Bishop Hartley the advantage. You know, he had, he faked the ball two different guys and uh, I think if the T-Birds kind of thought, well, it's another run, another run, and then they they got their flanker kind of off. He ran all across the formation and was wide open in between the zone. They sent somebody deep and somebody short, and he came in through the middle, and then he caught it and turned up the field, and there was really no one around. Got himself in the end zone. So Mark Wood comes on to kick up. Oh, it'll go for a two-point conversion. Yep. A turn and pitch to Ryan Perry. Has to get to the corner. Matthew Quatman tried to stop him just short, but Perry gets it across the goal line for the two-point conversion. Nice open field attempt there by Matthew Quatman, but Perry had turned that corner yeah. and gets it into the end zone to make it 14-7 on the Gethsemane Cemetery scoreboard. All right, good job by getting him in motion, just flip on the ball, and he just outrun everybody to the corner. So we'll step aside, 14-7 to score. LCC trailing Bishop Hartley here in the first quarter on WOSN. Yes, Seventy Cemetery is tonight's scoreboard sponsor. We want to—they want to wish the LCC T-Birds good luck in tonight's game. T-Birds trailing 14-7 on the S70 Cemetery scoreboard after a 30-yard touchdown pass, the first of the season from Peyton Underwood to Joey Wooten to make it 14-7. And now Mark Wood will kick, trying to get it out of, trying to get it off of a T-Bird. Instead, it goes out of bounds, and LCC is going to have pretty good starting field position once again. Right. Good job by that up man. 
for the T-Birds to kind of see it. He jumped out of the way to get to get out of that. Otherwise, you know, if that went off him, they'd try to maybe pick it up. But nonetheless, it goes out at the 30. They get it to 35. And generally, it's kind of counterintuitive. You want to go towards the football right. on the kickoff. Instead, he uh, <laughs> acted like he was playing a game of dodgeball and got his got his hands up in the air and uh, right. was able to avoid it and goes out of bounds. Yeah, the heads up football yeah. by that young man. That was, that was impressive, I think. I think LCC is going to make them kick it over. They're going to take it at the 35. That might, that's, might be a, a little good decision by uh, Coach Baldy because the one time that they did get the ball, they got it out to the 40. So I think he likes his kickoff. I mean, in Warren Markwood, uh, that, that ball had some anguish on it. It had a little <laughs> spin on it. I'm not sure how you kick a football to make it spin that way. But it did. It did. bent that thing. I think the guy we're talking about is Payne Cullum out there on the, like, dodged out of the way to get that to go out of bounds. That was a heck of a heads-up move. Because I was thinking to myself, what is he doing? Well, but that was, that was spinning but towards right. the sideline. A great, great, great move by him. So Mark Wood. That's why I'm up here and he's down there. Warren Mark Wood has the ball teed up, and we'll try it again. Either LCC thinks he's going to kick it out of bounds again, or they want one of their returners to get a crack at it. A squibber up the middle of the field, and they'll let it bounce, and it's grabbed, and he'll go straight down at the 25-yard line. So it worked out best for the uh, Hartley uh, Hawks there. And it did. So instead of starting at the 35, LCC going to start at the 25-yard line. And they'll have 75 yards to go to try to tie it up on the guest Seventy Cemetery scoreboard. And I think Frank Hauser was the one that kind of caught that and fell down on it. And again, I, I don't blame him. You got oh, your and back turn and you got 11 guys coming yeah. down chasing you. I'd and be it's, a little it skittish was, too. That hop kind of got him yeah, in no right. man's land there. Right. of like, okay, do I get it? Do I wait? Do I take the chance and let it bounce back another row? Uh, sure. So he was kind of put in no man's land there. But and, he, and we've seen probably many of ESPN highlights, college highlights, where somebody tries to make a play. And what happens is they fumble it and it yeah. gets worse. I saw a play this afternoon where uh, – a uh, guy fair caught a punt at the one yard line and the coaches were, were less than happy with his decision to fair catch the right. one yard line as Carson decision. Parker gets the carry. Landed on top of a Hartley Hawk and kept sure those did. legs churning. It's a 12 yard gain. It's enough for a first down. It's a good job by him to recognize that he wasn't down and nobody blew the whistle to keep fighting to get that extra yard and a half. So we approach one minute to go here in this first quarter. LCC trailing 14-7 as Carson Parker's had a, a quite the first quarter here on the ground, a 45-yard touchdown scamper and 12 more yards there to pick up the first down. I think they like some. They like their matchups in the middle. They've been doing a good job of getting those big guys out of the way. Parker will send Matthew Quatman in motion. Parker keeps it himself. He's cut down right at the line of scrimmage. Uh, stopped there by Zhang. I think Jay Zhang got him. Jay Zhang, freshman from his linebacker spot. Stops Parker for a gain of just one. Over your pads, shoot. It's a good job by the uh, Braves to kind of shed the blockers. They've kind of been exploited up the middle, but not that time. They got rid of the blockers and got where they needed to be. Second and nine. Upcoming for the T-Birds. Parker in the shotgun with Gabe Sear to his left. He'll hand off to oh, Parker will keep it himself, rolling to the near side. Gets to the 45. Nearly slipped past a tackle as Joey Wooten made a touchdown saving tackle. But it's another 12-yard gain and a first down for Carson Parker. Yeah. Tell you what, Shipman, the left tackle, is doing a good job of keeping the defensive end and keeping him on the outside so um, Parker can cut up behind him. And then all of a sudden they bring in um, uh, Frank Hauser, he comes in from, I don't know if he's playing a, a guard or what, but he comes from the side and makes the block and allows Parker to come that one up. So good piece of blocking for both those two young men. So that'll do it for the first quarter of action. Hartley leads LCC 14 to seven here on WOSN. Second quarter about to get underway here at Spartan Stadium as LCC plays host to the Bishop Hartley Hawks. I'm Garrett C. Wright, joined alongside Scott Mann, bringing you all the action here this afternoon. And the Hartley Hawks have a 14-7 lead on the Yosemite Cemetery scoreboard, but LCC putting together a nice little drive here. Three plays and two first downs. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're still running the football. They're getting some good looks. They're getting open space. 
doing a good job. Those big guys up front are, are you know, they've settled in today. After that first drive, they didn't really get much push, but right now they're really getting a push against the Hawks and allowing them to get four or five yards on a carry. So the ball at the, their own 49-yard line. Parker with Gabe Sierra to his left. Parker blown up. Anthony Murphy, the D1 linebacker commit for the Air Force Academy, comes off the edge and blows that play up before it can get started. Right. He didn't even sniff. They kind of faked the jet sweep, and he did not buy it. It went right to the quarterback. Smart smart move, and maybe that's why he's going to the Air Force Academy <laughs> as well. He's a pretty smart football player there. So second in. 15 now for the T-Birds and not the situation they want to be in. No, and when you're predominantly a running team, that 15 yards is tough sledding for them. Gabe Sierra to the left of Parker in the shotgun. Three receivers to his right. They'll send Payne Cutlip in motion. Cutlip fakes the handoff. Parker stands oh. in the pocket, fires Ab back the other way and couldn't connect with Ethan Frankhauser. Yeah, Frankhauser was open just put a little bit too much on it. Good play design. Well, in uh, second and 15, chances yeah. are you're going to have to throw the ball sure. one of these two downs because uh, as much as you'd like to rely on your your offense, you know, you're averaging six yards a carry and you got two downs to get 15, you don't, <laughs> you're going to have to put it in the air one of those two downs probably. Absolutely. It was a good play design. I mean, yeah. they kind of rolled him out and threw back behind it. Um, they kind of flooded this side and kind of tried to trick him. The defensive back kind of won a little bit this way, but recovered nicely enough to cause the incompletion. So Parker in a shotgun with three receivers to his right, and he'll roll to this near side. Looking, turns, fires, nice. has Sal Bujeni for the first down and more. At the 35, brought down just shy of the 30-yard line. Anthony Murphy makes a tackle for the Hartley Hawks, but a big pitch and catch there moves the chains and keeps the drive alive for the T-Birds. Yeah, it's kind of like the uh, T-Birds knew that they were going to play zone, and Johnny, Jenny, Excuse me, Sal got himself in the middle of that zone, sat down, and good job by Parker. To this nice pitch and catch, as you mentioned, right to him into, into that soft spot of that zone. So the ball right at the 30-yard line for LCC. The next play will be, make it the longest drive play-wise they've had here this afternoon. The seventh play of the drive upcoming on two consecutive passes for the T-Birds as Parker in the shotgun with Gabe Sierra to his left. A tight formation, and they'll hand off to Sierra. He's got a blocker, and he slipped as he tried to turn that corner. He had an alley there, sure but just did. lost that footing. He did. They had the, the guys had a blocking for him, and he tried to turn it and just cleats one out from under him, and down he went. So instead of... Uh, nice pickup there, yeah. kind of drop him about a yard and a half, two yards there. He, he did, he had an alley there just mm -hmm. for a moment, but went to turn that corner and just lost his footing. Sure did, and I, it, it would have been something. They would have had something there because they, they had the blocking out there, they had they had the players, and he just slipped to try to turn it up. Mylon Cowan's in the ball game for the first time for the T-Birds at the slot receiver position to Parker's left as he's alone in the shotgun for the first time on second and 12. Parker back to pass, flushed from the pocket by Murphy. Murphy slips as Parker now rolls to the near side and overthrows an yep. LCC T-Bird as he was looking for Gabe Sierra. Gabe. Great individual effort there by Sadwa Jenny to almost come up with the football after the overthrow. Yeah, Sierra was open and Parker just kind of running and got too much oomph behind that one, one out of bounds. It, and it's easy to float that football sure. when you're on a run. Absolutely. Yeah, running for your life knowing that I got three guys barreling in and, you know, he did a good job to to, to get away from that pressure. Well, and Anthony Murphy is the guy coming off the, yeah. the edge here for Hartley, a 6'3", 225-pound senior who's going to go to college for free. That's a <laughs> that's a, quite the intimidating guy coming off the edge. He's kind of slipped a little bit too. Yeah. Parker into the open field of the 25-yard line. Going to make it fourth and relatively short here sure. after third and 12. A pickup of about nine there for Parker. Makes it fourth and short. Uh, I would expect them to go for it again. Let's see, last time it worked out pretty well. They got, a, what, a 50-some yard uh, scamper. And 45-yard touchdown. Yeah, right. So the ball to 23-yard line on fourth and three here for the T-Birds. As the clock continues to tick under nine minutes remaining on the Gas 70 Cemetery scoreboard. As the T-Birds trail 14-7. Fourth and three, Parker with two wide receivers to his left. They'll send the man oh, in motion. Guys and in motion. He got. No, he stopped. He shouldn't have stopped. Well, if he keeps moving. Gabe Sierra tried to make it look like, oh, I was going to line up to my wing spot after yeah. stopping. But that's a false start, and that's going to push him back five. Yeah. And he knew it. And he was upset with himself and trying to make a play for his, for his teammates. And unfortunately... 
two guys in motion leads to the penalty and timeout T-Birds. So instead of fourth and three, we'll stay here fourth and eight for LCC upcoming and that, that definitely changes things on, on the play call. Yeah, it sure does. We'll see if uh, they can, if Sierra kind of lets that one go. He's on the sidelines and not happy with himself right now. And you know, he's got to come out and play, um, play defense. So he's got to let that one go and can't take that bad play with him and see if the, his teammates can pick him up and, and get this first down. So fourth and eight upcoming yeah. here. And uh, they've, in their past game so far, they've, they've shown a little bit of everything where, you know, they had the throwback uh, where they tried to find Ethan Frankhauser on the back side of defense where they've just had Carson Parker drop back and throw. Is there is one of those maybe a better spot than, than the other on fourth and eight here? I don't know. I would bet they're thinking that uh, the Hawks are going to play that zone again and look for uh, one of the receivers to go inside that, that zone. Um, they like Jenny to get into that zone before or maybe even Quatman. He's kind of been quiet here on the offensive end. He's been a beast on kickoff returns yep. and defense, but we'll see if he's got some speed, so maybe they'll get him in, into space. He's got two touchdowns on the year, so maybe they'll get him in space. Fourth and eight. Milan Cowan's in the ball game for LCC. Let's see who trot out to that middle receiver spot to the left of Carson Parker in the shotgun. 8.45 to go in this first half as Parker takes a snap and rolls to that side. Murphy chasing him from behind, oh, and he overthrew it, and it's intercepted by Raylo Hogan. Hogan slips a tackle, and he's back the other way. Hogan to the 40-yard line, and he goes down. But the one thing LCC Scott Palti, head coach Scott Palti told us was, we got to stop turning the football over. We've yep. turned it over eight times the last two weeks, and they get caught right there on the interception and the return back out to the 40-yard line. And Parker had somebody just, I, maybe he's too pumped up. He threw that one just a little bit too hard and overthrew his receiver. So LCC. I, I like the play call, but just, he just. Yeah, I had a, had a guy there yeah. very close to the sticks, just let it float a little bit. And, Bishop Hartley will take over at the 40-yard line. So Peyton Underwood will send a man in motion, Joey Wooten. Nope, Underwood will keep it himself. Got out to the 45, the 46 before rolling down at the 47-yard line. A couple of team birds make the stop, but that's a nice play on first down there for Underwood keeping it for the first time. Yeah, and it's good to make, make them uh, play him and respect him. Second and two will be upcoming here for the Hartley Hawks. It's Robert Lathan and Rory Ralston line up behind Underwood. And Ralston will get the carry. He's got the first down and more to the 45-yard line before he stood up. Carson Parker in on the stop for LCC. You know, I, I, I haven't seen Hubbard. Yeah, after that. I wonder if that first play, wonder if something happened, if he got hurt or something, because... Uh, since then, it's been Robert Lathan as the yeah, running he's back. Had, he's got 762 yards on the season so far in four games. And for some reason, I haven't seen him in the last two or three possessions. First and 10 for the Hawks. Wooten, the handoff and after the motion man. And he barrels straight through an LCC defender. Milan Cowens hangs on for dear life for the stop, but it's another Hartley Hawks first down. Yeah, and Wooten's running hard. And they're not saying the guys that they're handing the ball over are doing a good job. It's just the guy that are bell cow before they came in here is not in. I, and I don't really see him on the sidelines. He may be dinged up a little bit. We'll yeah. check into that. He got that first uh, carry of the game and was and in on that first series. And then they brought in Lathan, and we haven't seen Deontay Hubbard since then. Yeah, and Parker kind of held on to the back. I wonder if he kind of like tweaked the knee or something. Ralston the carry to the 30-yard line. See, I, I see him over there on the sidelines, set down. I don't know. Ethan Frankhauser on the stop for LCC there. So second and five upcoming. Hartley in the I formation behind Underwood. Hand off to Lathan. Lathan oh, met job. in the hole. Yes. As. Gianni McKee in on the stop for the T-Birds, the big fellow, 5'11", 320-pound sophomore. He got a little bit of help from uh, Frank Hauser, too. So third and short here. Big play yeah. here for this LCC yeah, defense. You're, you're right. they got to come up and make a play for their offense. 
Late in the handoff. Good he gets job. the first down and more to the 20 yard line. And he gets to the 25, so he's well past those first down sticks. He did a good job of tiptoeing, waiting, setting up his blocks. And it's once he's seen the hole, he just put a foot in the ground and he took off. He's got good vision for a he freshman, sure, a 5'11, 175 pound guy out there. He sure does. So first and 10. Under six minutes to go here on the Gethsemane Cemetery scoreboard for LCC and Bishop Hartley. They'll turn and pitch to Lathan. He's got a convoy of blockers, and he's upended. Nice play by Milan Cowan's in the open field. Otherwise, Lathan could still be running. Yeah, McCowan's kind of tripped him up, shoestring tackle. Right, if not, he, he would have been untouched into the end zone because he had a caravan in front of him. So Bishop Hartley will turn a tempo up just a little bit. No huddle on second and three. Off, turn around and off to Lathan off the left side. A couple of T-Birds there. there. Good job. I think Cowens was there as well. Quatman was there. They were the host of them, as you mentioned. They did a good job of, you know, not allowing the push that they were kind of getting the last three or four downs. Yeah. But nonetheless, I think a first down, though. And one other thing, uh, Scott Palti said, just get lined up correctly yeah, defensively because right. uh, Bishop Hartley's throwing all sorts of formations out there, just making sure we're lined up is uh, a key today as Lathan gets the sweep to the outside, and he will trot in from 11 yards out for his second touchdown run here with his first half to extend the Hartley lead. Oh, we got a penalty flag. Got a hold oh. on, the, on the Hartley Hawks. Yeah. Otherwise, that was an easy scamper for Lathan. Yeah, Maybe think, that's why. Yeah, I think 76 was out there. And he, he took his guy, uh, Donovan Davis, <laughs> took his guy all the way out of bounds and maybe hadn't got a little bit too much jersey. Well, push him back. Right. 10 yards. And those holding penalties, Scott, are costly penalties. Absolutely. Where, you know, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, uh, those are some, some drive killers. Absolutely. And what I was impressed with Latham, how he he made one cut and boom, he's he yeah. he changes directions quickly. Team or Hawks, excuse me, throw to Ryan Perry, makes one man miss, gets down to the ten yard line. But easy pitch and catch there from Underwood to Perry. Cutlup and Frank Hauser out there quickly. Frank Hauser from his outside linebacker position. 4:45 to go here in this first half. 14-7. Hawks trying to punch in another one. Underwood in the shotgun. Lathan to his left. Lathan gets the handoff, and he's met in the hole. Matt Sira in on the stop there. Yep, waiting for him. He did a good job in coming up and filling from that linebacker spot. A nice sportsmanship there by Sira to help Lathan back up after, after the play, but it'll bring up third and eight here for the Hawks. This is huge for the T-Birds to get a stop here and get off the field. They still can get a first down without scoring. So he'll turn and pitch to Lathan. Lathan, convoy of blockers, turns the corner, and now he goes in from eight yards out for the touchdown. They they do like that little uh, sweep pitch there, and they get some line, linemen out there. The LCC's had a hard time defending that. An 11 play, 60 yard touchdown drive for the Hartley Hawks extends their lead to 20 to 7 on the Guest 70 Cemetery scoreboard. Backed up. I tell you, I, I am impressed for a freshman yeah. how well he's he runs football there. He's got a bright future for he these sure Harley Hawks. So Bishop Hartley will trot the two-point conversion unit back out on the field. Straight eye formation behind Underwood. Send Oop. Perry in motion. That's a, a false start. Yeah, false start for the 77. Got out of the stance a little too early there. Isaac Asidu, the guilty party. <laughs> we saw we got a great view of it up here, Scott, where he just got just a little bit head start there. Yeah, he, unfortunately for him, he's a big man, and when he moves, everybody sees. That's uh, he's done a good job. He's been a, he's been very very good at getting out from his uh, tackle position to lead that sweep. And I think they were going to call that again, and he's got a little too quick. Yeah, similar play to what they did on their last two-point yeah. conversion, where they just uh, get Ryan Perry in motion and pitch it out to him, and uh, it's a race to the pylon. And uh, the 6'3", 290-pound senior, it's tough to, to not see him uh, right. trying to get a head start. But you can see why he's getting some college looks, because he is pretty agile for as big as he is to get out on that sweep. Underwood pressured immediately by Gabe Sierra, just has yeah. to throw it away, and the score remains 20 to 7 here in the first half. We'll step aside. Hartley Hawks with a 27 lead over LCC on WOSN.
Tonight's scoreboard brought to you by Gethsemane Cemetery. They want to wish the LCC T-Birds good luck in tonight's game. T-Birds trail 27 on the Gethsemane Cemetery scoreboard as Bishop Hartley punches in another touchdown, an eight-yard touchdown run by Robert Lathan, his second of the first half, as the Hawks in front, 20 to seven. As Warren Mark Wood will kick it deep, caught by Milan Cowens for LCC at the 20-yard line. He'll go straight ahead, gets to the 35-yard line, the 36. LCC has had pretty good starting field position so far yeah. here tonight, Scott. Right, and, and the last drive they had a good job until they had a little penalty, kind of set them back a little bit, and then they had to try to make a play through the air, which really, it's not really their, their bell cows or strength yeah. there, right? They want to run the football predominantly and make some good throws. They did make some good throws on that drive. Uh, unfortunately, that one just kind of got away from him a little bit. He had the guy, you know, just got to make a play, like, right on offense that's yeah. kind of they're down 20 to 7 they gotta make a play on defense and, and offensively they move the ball they just haven't put the ball in the end zone or capitalized with a field goal at all so under four minutes to go here in this first half Bishop Hartley will get the ball to start the second half so an important drive here for the T-Birds Carson Parker lines up in the shotgun bunch formation with Gabe Sierra to his right he'll take the snap as uh, Payne Cutlip to his right Parker able to outrun one Hartley Hawk, breaks another tackle at the 35 and is able to get back to the line of scrimmage. And that is a win for LCC. Yeah, right. He was running for his life and it was a heck of a, a no gain for him to, it could have been a six, seven yard loss. Luckily he got right back to the sure line did. of scrimmage and broke, able to outrun one guy, broke a tackle and was in, uh, stepped out of bounds before Anthony Murphy could get there. I mean, I like the play design because they want to get their quarterback out in space because uh, the Hawks are doing a good job of taking away the middle because they exploited that early in the first quarter. They just haven't been able to get to it now. But the Hawks also may be able to run him down from behind. Massey Quammett in motion. Parker will keep it himself. He's spun down at the line of scrimmage. He's trying to get up that middle again, but they're doing a good job. The defensive tackle and the linebackers coming up and filling and uh, making a tackle. Rory Ralston makes the stop. Timeout called by Bishop Hartley. And I, I guess not surprised by that timeout. They've got three of them remaining. Yeah. Going to make LCC conceivably be in a spot where you might need to throw the football if you get an incompletion. The clock stops, and you'll have two timeouts with some time to work with. And I'm sure Bishop Hartley wants to punch one in here uh, before the half ends. You're right. You just never you never take your foot off the gas, right? Because you just never know. We've we've seen that in yeah. a few games that we've done that, you know, a 19 nothing lead does, is not enough sometimes. or or whatever, 13 points, you're thinking, well, let's get as many as we can, and we can take the foot off the gas maybe in the fourth quarter, but you just never you just never know. So a uh, timeout there by Bishop Hartley. Brings up a third and long here for LCC, and uh, it kind of puts LCC in a, a tough spot. Do you run the football, make Bishop Hartley use a timeout? Do you throw the football and risk the clock stopping after just a couple of seconds if it's an incompletion? Uh, that, that puts LCC in a difficult spot. Yeah, absolutely, but I think it's, you're looking at third and nine, and you're probably looking at what is our best play. You know, if it's a pass, then you're going to run a pass. If it's a run, then we're going to run a run. And, you know, what, 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 what's our best play to get us nine yards or ten yards or something? we gotta, we got to run our best play. So Parker will be in the shotgun by his lonesome. Three to his right, two to his left on third and nine with 3.37 to go on the guest Semite Cemetery scoreboard here in the first half. Parker drops back, turns, fires to Cowan. He left it too high. Yeah. Yeah. Mylon Cowens was going to have a little bit of running room there, but he had to jump up and grab it. Yeah, Ian Jackson was coming in from his uh, defensive line position, his guard, and uh, caused some pressure that caused Jackson to throw that one a little high. And, and that, that kind of put LCC in conflict like, like we talked, Scott, that, you know, five seconds goes off the clock now. Bishop Hartley keeps two timeouts to, to, to use however they want when they get the football back. Yeah. Hey, the, and then Matt, that was a play I think that they might have got their t nine, ten yards, but just, you know, they've just been so close. Parker, the putter as well. Ball will bounce at the 35-yard line, take an LCC bounce, go to the 29, and roll back to the 30. So Hartley will have to go 70 yards with 320 remaining here in this first half. Yeah. And uh, look for a heavy dose of number 12. So the T-Birds take 
36 seconds off the clock there on that drive on the three and out. And Bishop Hartley will go back to work scoring on their last two drives. 30-yard touchdown pass from Peyton Underwood, his first of the season, and a touchdown run by Robert Lathan. And Lathan will line up as the tailback once again. Behind Ralston, Ralston goes in motion, and they'll put the ball in the air. Ryan Perry has some room to run oh, at the 40-yard line, and he's off to the races. Slips a tackle to the LCC 40 before he's brought down by Matthew Quatman, but a big play there by Ryan Perry in the open field. Yeah, good job by him to cut, run through a few tackles. And, you know, you could hear the groans from the LCC faithful, like, oh, we missed one. A small gain got him an extra 30 or 40 yards. So the ball to the 33-yard line, 32-yard line. But the Hawks in business. Maybe it'll flip the field from one 30-yard line yeah. to the other. It's still plenty of time, 311. They took Underwood in the shotgun once again. Lathan to his left. Lathan gets the handoff, goes straight up the middle of the field with a 25-yard oh, line. He fumbled the football. Sure did. One official is looking at the other. Yes, with his, they, well, yeah. and he, he, they bounced on it. Gianni McKee yeah. gets the fumble recovery. One official looked at the other like, was that a fumble or not? And yeah. that official said, uh, it's going to the T-Birds. I didn't see who made the hit. That might have been uh, Cowens, but so, yeah, I think so. Him and the coaches are going crazy, but he stuck his head right on that football and popped it loose. He stuck him pretty good and knocked that one loose. That's exactly what the T-Birds needed here to get yeah. the ball turned over. See if that, that energy, that, that positive thing from the defense leads to maybe an offense coming in and score before halftime and, and, and they're going within all the uh, momentum into the halftime. Yeah, getting uh, those yes. turnovers can be big momentum changers and we'll see if LCC is able to capitalize at their own 25 yard line. Three minutes to go here in this opening half with three ti or two timeouts of their own. Parker in the shotgun by himself. Three to his right, two to his left. And he'll drop back to pass. Turns and fires to Sal Wajeni. Caught, slips a tackle. Nope, can't slip that tackle. He's brought down in the open field by Markwood. But an easy pitch and catch there for LCC on first down. Good job by Markwood to, to get him to come down there because uh, he misses him, and that might have been uh, trouble. So second and short now for the T-Birds. 2.45 to go in this opening half. Good job by Carson Parker to throw. That, that one he, he put right on the money. Yeah. He's been kind of a little high the last two or three throws, but that one, it was right there. Tight formation. Parker will keep it himself after the fake to Gabe Sierra. He's got an alley to the 40. He's got the first down before he stepped out of bounds. Rory Ralston makes the stop for Bishop Hartley, but it moves the chains for LCC and gets him a little more momentum. Sure does. Good job. Good play design. Not only that, he got the first down, but he got out of bounds too, so they got plenty of time. Here, clock doesn't start until on the snap. Instead of once the ball's set, it was a good job getting out of bounds. It's a win-win for the offense for the T-Birds. LCC will bring Ethan Frankhauser out of the ball game in exchange for Payne Cutlip. And you, you mentioned, Scott, that, that is a big swing there that, that, you know, the clock's not running right now, that he gets out of bounds. They got plenty of time to get right. set and, and make the, the correct calls. Right, and then, and, you know, get, get everyone set, get everyone they're supposed to be, to know exactly what they're doing. Parker in his shotgun. He'll send Cutlip in motion. Fake the handoff to Cutlip. He'll bring it back this way. I uh, slipped and a little bit. Slipped. Yep. That's the second or third time we've seen somebody trying to turn that corner and just slip up on this turf here at Spartan Stadium. Yeah. And that's a loss of uh, about two yards. Yes, it is. Still two minutes left. Plenty of time. Ball to 40 yard line. I don't know how much. He would have got out of that, but like right. you said, there's, he's the third or fourth guy to slip on this turf. It's not like it's raining or anything that yeah. they were with. I just get gets soaking up that sun. Maybe gets a little slickery. Maybe either. I don't know. Three to the left, two to the right. Parker Ooh. in the shotgun by himself. Nobody blocks Anthony Murphy. He's Still able to slip feet. a couple of tackles before he's gobbled up by Donovan up. Davis. Yeah, the big fella says, "You ain't gonna slip out of this one." Nobody blocked the Division yeah. One linebacker off yeah. the edge, and uh, Parker had to immediately uh, try to take off and was able to slip two of them, but wasn't able to slip a third. And uh, now Hartley calls a timeout here uh, with 1.35 to go in the first half and third and long upcoming. Yeah. Tell you what, it was a good job by uh, Parker to get away from the first yeah. two guys, but 
Not the third one. The, uh, Donovan Davis came in and put him down yeah. to the turf. And, and, and at that point, you know, he's just he's served up like a starving man on a Christmas ham. He's just, <laughs> right. it's, he's just um, just primed and ready to. Yeah. yeah. I think they want the clock to yeah, 137, to, but I don't know if these guys. Yeah, are. I think the young pup over here is uh, <laughs> on the old Snapchat. One three seven. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll we'll help out a little bit here. Yeah. There we go. Yep. So now we're all squared away. Third and fifteen upcoming here for the T-Birds. See if they go with that that screen pass that might have got him something last time. He just yeah, uh, Parker threw it a little bit high. See if they go with that because again that pass rush is coming. So maybe this will slow him down a little bit. Hear that was popping in, a, in something in us sitting down somewhere in the middle of that zone. And I'm completely wrong. <laughs> Parker keeps it himself, got to the 40 yard line. So a gain of about five there on third down, but another timeout called by Bishop Hartley. Their final timeout here with this first half. And we'll step aside as well. 90 seconds remain on the Guest 70 Cemetery scoreboard. Bishop Hartley leads 20 to 7 on WOSN. LCC with the football faced with fourth and ten with 131 to go on the guest 70 cemetery scoreboard here in the first half, trailing 20 to 7. And it looks like they're gonna send the punt unit out. Yeah. Probably a good decision and to get it away. You don't want to turn it over and downs on your end of the field. So you punt it away, make them go 70, 80 yards. And we've Hopefully seen, your defense make a play again. Well, we've seen Carson Parker have a couple of yes. nice punts here this afternoon. He's, he's gotten when he's uh, been able to, to have plenty of time. He's, he's got a good boot. Yeah, right. He does. And get one away and, you know, hopefully doesn't get a block. See if they're coming. I don't think they're going. I think they're setting up a return here. So the snap back to Parker. And he will punt it away. It's high punt there. Good. Bounces at the 35-yard line, takes a great LCC yes, bounce. Sure does. Inside the 15-yard line to the 13-yard line, and that's going to make things much more difficult for the Hartley Hawks. Yeah, it does. That was a heck of a punt by Parker. So 119 to go here in this first half. Bishop Hartley could have a long way to go. After turning it over the last time, so LCC wasn't able to capitalize on the turnover, but also. Hartley's going to have to go a long way to, yeah. to punch in another one here before the end of the half. Absolutely. But, I, you know, I think maybe a quick pass to Perry or something Wooten on a, on a jet sweep or Latham on a, something quick so they can get, get out to the sideline and get out of bounds. Underwood will be in the shotgun. Latham now goes in motion, and they'll turn and fire it to him. Latham in the open field at the 15-yard line. Convoy of blockers, the 25, the 30, before he steps out of bounds. And that's exactly what you mentioned, Scott. You get your athletes the football in space. And, yeah. and I, I don't think it's you know unfair to say it certainly seems like the Hawks think they've got a mismatch yeah. in space. Absolutely. And we kind of touched on that in the first quarter. And they, that's what they kind of wanted to get their guys in space, especially now that their number one running back is, I think, over there on the bench. So now they want to get their athletes in space. And like you said, I think they think that they're, they're, their athletes are better than the LCC athletes right now. Underwood rolls, fires, oh. and a little too long for Latham. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Lauk is uh, complaining. He, got, he had two guys holding his jersey, and he kind of lays his hand after, like, come on, what, what do I, I got to do? do to get a call? He's like, you can't miss me. 109 <laughs> remaining here in this first half as Bishop Hartley avoids the holding penalty. Hawks <laughs> yeah. without a timeout. LCC still with two. As Underwood will be in the shotgun. Lathan to his left once again. He'll drop back to pass. Looking to go deep. Has a man. Has him. It's Perry. And he caught it to the 30-yard line. And Ryan Perry has one man to beat. And he's brought down just shy of the goal yeah, line. Like it was one, about to be half, a 70-yard yeah. touchdown. Right. Instead, it's 69 and a half. And the Hartley Hawks will have the football first in goal. I'll tell you what, Underwood, I like, uh, you know, we, say, we said the pregame zero touchdowns. And six could, interceptions. Yeah, yeah. man, he, he put that one right on the money. And he's got one already. That could have been two. Full house back to field for the Hawks. 
Lathan, the tailback, gets the handoff, and he's in from one yard out. Robert Lathan's third touchdown run of the first half makes it 26-7 on the Gethsemane Cemetery scoreboard. Now, I I'm just still impressed with that pass as Perry got past the defender, and he put that right on the money in stride. He caught it. A good job by the quarterback to allow him to catch it and run after the catch. You know, he didn't have to wait on it. He was in stride. That was perfection. Latham again about the same play. Scores two-point conversion. Make it 28-7 for the Hawks. So Bishop Hartley extends that lead on the long pass. And you're right, Scott. He, uh, Peyton Underwood put that football right on the money, exactly where Ryan Perry was, where he was able to run under it and able to catch it in stride and keep on going, brought down to shy of the goal line. And then Robert Latham gets his third touchdown. And the pass went, what, 40, 45 yeah. yards to put that right there. That's really hard, you know, up here it looks easy, on TV it looks easy. I mean, to, to actually put that on, on his number was, was impressive. And, and for any quarterback to do that, 30, 40 yards down the field is, is quite a feat that not many can do that. A lot of times, they, you know, they get it there, but they have to wait or if it's off right. to the side or they have to go up and get it. But that was in stride, he caught it and allowed him to go the extra 30, well, 29 and a half yards right to the goal line, basically. Uh, to allow to set up the touchdown run. So 28-7 to score on the Guest 70 Cemetery scoreboard. Hawks with the lead with 45 seconds to go here in this first half. As the T-Birds send a couple of guys deep to return, Mylon Cowens and Matthew Quatman deep. And we've seen Bishop Hartley kind of kick it all over the yard yeah, here right, in, yeah. in this first half with their, with their attempts. Uh, one was deep, a couple out of bounds, a couple of squibbers in the middle of the field. It, it just kind of has kept LCC on their toes a bit. Yeah, I would I would suspect some sort of uh, squib kick here just to see what, you know, they don't want to go out of bounds. Kick it, try to as far as deep as you can, squib in it. Kind of a line drive. Goes off of Mylon Cowens at the 15-yard line, and he'll bring it to the middle of the field. And he's in the open field, uh -oh. and he's off to the races to the 45, the 48-yard line. But that's a big return yes. there by Mylon Cowens and gives LCC a little bit of life with two timeouts and less than 40 seconds to go in the half. So, yeah, that, it's doable now. Like you said, two timeouts left, 38 seconds, plenty of time. So Mylon Cowens is brought down at the 48-yard line. It's the best starting field position for LCC here in this first half. And, you know, from that, the first kickoff that um, Quatman got out to the 40, yeah. and you got uh, Mayan Cowens getting out here to the 47, 48-yard line. You see why they've been squibbing and kicking out of bounds. Kicking out of bounds to start the 35. <laughs> that's, a, that's a win. Right here we're at the 48. <laughs> yeah, right. So Carson Parker will bring the LCC offense back out with three wide receivers to his right, as well as running back Gabe Sierra and a wide receiver by his lonesome on the left. Parker rolls this way, turns and fires to Cowens, makes the catch, is hit right at the first down stick. And it'll say he's just shy of the first down marker, and LCC will take a timeout. We'll keep it here. Cowens got punished for the hit. He sure did. But, but. Donovan Tucker came from, looks like, I think he, they got him here as, Safety, so maybe he came. Maybe he's like the uh, nickel back, but he came in. He laid the wood, didn't he? he did. Cowan's head kind of flipped back, but good job for him to hold on to the ball because that was a tough hit. So a gain of eight is the call. Thirty seconds remain in this first half, and it would be it would be an important touchdown score sure. here by LCC if they could put one on the board. Hartley gets the ball to begin the second half, and uh, you don't want to be facing the the possibility of going down 35-7 if you can go into the halftime break, you know, being 28-14 or, or somewhere sure. similar. And like you said, you take the momentum with you to the halftime, make a few adjustments. You just never know because you sh they've proved they can they can move the football on them. They just have trouble to tackle in space tonight. Exactly. Not tonight. This afternoon. <laughs> it's just uh, not used to that, I guess, yet. Parker will line up at shotgun by his lonesome with three wide receivers to his left and two to the right on second and two with 30 seconds to go here in the half. Parker will turn and fire, looking for Gwajeni a little low, and the pass is incomplete, but it does stop the clock. Yeah, Gwajeni kind of, I think Parker thought he was going to uh, sit down in that zone, and Gwajeni want to like another step too much. But they're playing, they're rushing two, two and a half, three guys and dropping 10, nine guys. You can see they got a, uh, about a four, four man zone front and then four guys behind them. So it's going to be tough 
tough uh, throwing here to get in between these holes in this zone. So Parker by himself in the shotgun once again. The junior takes the snap, turns to his left and throws, and a left it a little short of Matthew Quatman. It'll bring up fourth and two. A little early, a little early on that break. Quatman didn't have his head around yet. I don't know if Parker felt the rush or something. He just got that rid of that one a little bit too early. So fourth and two now. T-Bird still have a timeout. Yeah, you, one is you have to get the first down. Right, right you don't want to give no, Bishop you, Hartley the football at the 44-yard line. Right, as they showed this so far, they got some receivers that can run by the defensive back, and they got a quarterback that sure can throw it. So you want to get the first down at, at the very least. Fourth and two. Parker will turn and fire. It's caught by Quatman, spins out of a tackle and tries to drag a defender to the 35-yard line, yeah. but it does move the chains with 17 seconds. Barber almost carry on was jumping that route, and he about got there. He had eyes for yes, he a, did. He had a, a pick, pick six, big six play. Yes, he did. He was half step short on that. So Parker will clock the football. Yeah. 12 seconds remaining here in this first half. And I, th I think it's safe to say Carson Parker can get it to the end zone from a 35 yards out if you need to have one final hurrah here. But it looks like, yeah. you know, obviously, it doesn't look like, obviously, LCC wants to get a little bit closer here. Right, and, you know, they still got one timeout. Maybe they're saving it for the, the, the field goal unit to get out there and get set or something, or I, I you know. Just a little insurance sure, policy there. absolutely, to keep that. Keep that in your back pocket just in case. So three receivers and a running back to Parker's right in the shotgun, and he'll look this way. Rolling, rolling, taking a long time, and we'll just float it out of bounds. Good decision. That'll bring up just six seconds left here in this first half. And that was smart of him to throw and get rid of that. He's running out. Nobody's really getting open. The defensive backs, the seven or eight of them that are out there, have done doing a great job of you know, not giving any open receivers. So six seconds to a chance trying to get two plays off, or is this, is this the last hurrah of the half? Yeah, I think you would want to get maybe, I don't know how good their field goal kicker is, but maybe you want to get another 10, 15 yards and then at least try a, uh, a field goal to come away with something positive going into halftime. Because like, like I said, they moved the ball on offense, just haven't got it in the end zone. and. Usually a penalty or a turnover or something been shooting themselves in the foot to end a drive. Looks like the Hawks are preparing for a Hail Mary. Yeah. As Parker will turn, oh. fire just past the outstretched arms of Ethan Frankhauser, and they did try to get two yeah. plays off here. And now with three seconds, I think now everybody's in agreement. Yeah, this is, this is going to be the last one of the half. Yeah. I think they were trying to get Sierra. Yeah, they had like a little Ethan Frankhauser out yep. there in the slot to just, you know, with the Hartley Hawks being 15 yards back, like, right. hey, this is going to be an easy we'll, pitch and catch and make right. it a little easier on the Let's get eight, nine, ten yards, get it to the 25, and maybe attempt the field goal, or at least we're closer to the end zone. So the ball to 35-yard line. Parker in the pocket, now flushed, and we'll just have to turn and let it fly into the far corner of the end zone. It's caught, but out on the bounds. track. Yeah. <laughs> Wind kind of pushed that one out of bounds. So the half ends on the incompletion, and we'll head to the halftime break. Bishop Hartley 28, LCC 7. After two quarters of play, we'll step aside and come back with third quarter action here on WOSN. Second half about to get underway here at Spartan Stadium between LCC and Bishop Hartley. And tonight's scoreboard brought to you by Gethsemane Cemetery. They want to wish the LCC Thunderbirds good luck in tonight's football game. And the T-Birds trail 28-7 here at the halftime break. I'm Garrett C. Wright, joined alongside Scott Paul or Scott uh, Mag here. Scott Palti's LCC T-Birds uh, got a, a touchdown on their second drive. And uh, just uh, there's... There's an awful lot of speed, an awful lot of athleticism on Bishop Hartley that uh, it seems they think they found a hole somewhere in LCC's defense. Yeah, they have. They've, they've got their uh, receivers out there on the outside, and it kind of hurt them. And then and if, uh, what they've done, they've really loved that toss sweep to yeah. the right side with the pulling guards. I think they, they not only is there speed athletes, but their linemen are getting out there on the one they're running that speed sweep. 
that little toss sweep outside there to get them linemen out there to get out in front and lead the block and it's getting them seven eight nine ten ten yards so they're you know not only if it's their speed athletes receivers running backs what have you but it's also the linemen to be able to get out there too and and i'm it's not they're not small guys they're like 290 pounds 285 yeah. and i don't know about you but i don't want to get in the way of that either <laughs> no, i'm gonna be uh, diving for cover too so uh that's impressive as well yeah, uh, and I, I don't know if there is an adjustment that you can make here. It's like, hey, okay, we are going to set the edge. We're going to make sure nobody gets outside of us. Then are you susceptible to getting beat up the middle? It's it, it's, it's such a tough, you know, kind of what way you want to defend. Do you want to obviously you don't want to allow them to get to the edge and turn the corner, yeah. but you also don't want to uh, just give up the middle of the field either. Right. They they kind of gashed him a little bit up the middle there. The first couple runs with Hubbard. And like you said, yeah, I think he is on the sidelines and street clothes. He had something with his ankle, I believe. But uh, they've been gashing him outside. So, you know, it's catch-22. If you take away one, can they get us in the other one? But I think, I think they have to be able to take away that edge, like you mentioned, that they have to be able to uh, not let him get outside and, and maybe get, get some pressure. But they do such a good job of faking here, faking there. They got five different guys going different directions, so it's tough to really key on someone. And I think that's why Coach Paulding talked to us in the and, and before this week when he sent us his keys to the game, was talking about how everybody has to play situation football and everybody has to be locked in. And I think that because of all their fakes and all their yeah. going misdirection stuff, you got to understand what's going on and know your assignment, or if you don't, they're going to get in space and they're going to run past you. Well, and for, if you're a defensive back for LCC, the two or three t different times that Peyton Underwood is faking a, a handoff, he, he makes you pause for just a second, and then unfortunately somebody is potentially running by you. Yeah, absolutely. So the T-Birds squib it straight up ahead to the Bishop Hartley Hawks as Donovan Tucker catches the football and returns it to the 43-yard line, and Bishop Hartley going to have pretty good starting field position here to start the second half. Yeah. So we'll see if they made any adjustment. I, I, would, I would assume it would have to be something. Can't let them get outside. We'll see if maybe the linebackers are going to start firing there or what, but, like, it's just this catch-22. They're just so good at everything they can do. Yeah. And it's not only that, but those offensive linemen are skilled, and they can get out there and, and block, so... Even if you're out there, you've still got a 280-pound guy coming at you. Lathan dots the eye in the formation. He'll take the pitch, go straight up the middle of the field, crosses the midfield stripe to the 47-yard line, a gain of eight there on first down for the freshman. Yeah, and it, it, it's, I think it's just boiling down. Is the, They're winning the battle up front right now, and, and they're having their way with the Tebers, and Tebers have to somehow, some way, combat this superior offensive line that the Hawks have. And it's not like LCC's getting pushed around or no. anything like that. It's been long drives or, you know, eight play drives here as uh, Rory Ralston gets enough for the first down on his first carry of the second half. It's not like they're getting shoved around or anything like that. It's just uh, Bishop Hartley has been efficient. They've been able to continue yeah. to push the ball ahead a couple of yards at a time and then uh, either break one or uh, they've you know, gotten a big play here or there, but it, it's not like these are one play 70 yard drives or anything like that. But Bishop Hartley's gone, um, you know, nine plays, 11 plays, uh, six plays. It, it, they, they've had sustained drives against this LCC defense. Underwood turns and fires to Perry in the open field at the 40. He's got to turn the corner and does the 30, 20, 10, 5. And it's a 45 yard touchdown pitch and catch from Peyton Underwood to Ryan Perry. And Again, got a guy in space. Parker tried to get there, missed the tackle, and he went all the way in for a touchdown. And a good job. Um, I didn't catch the guy out there, the what number, but there was a, a receiver that made a heck of a lot, block to, to spring Perry to get to the touchdown there. So the second touchdown pass of the season, second touchdown pass of the game for Peyton Underwood is the Hark Hawks will go for two once again. They'll turn around, hand it off to Latham, and he has across the goal line and in for the two-point conversion to make it 36 to seven for the Hawks on the Gethsemane Cemetery scoreboard. We'll step aside here in the third quarter. Hawks lead on WOSN. Thirty-six to seven, the score. Bishop Hartley leads LCC on the Gethsemane Cemetery scoreboard as the Hawks go 
Four plays and 55 yards capped off by a 45-yard touchdown pass from Peyton Underwood to Ryan Perry to extend their lead out to 36-7. to And, of course, there is a 30-point uh, running clock rule, so we're at 29 right now. So LCC trying to punch one in here, get some points on the board, and avoid that running clock as Lylan Cowens will take it out to the 37-yard line on the return. So at 10.47 to go here in this third quarter, LCC will get their first crack in the th second half. Yeah. And they need to sustain a drive here, maybe a 10 play, a 12 play, a 13 play drive, and just keep chipping away, chipping away, and, and get some confidence in themselves. Like we mentioned in the pregame a little bit, and uh, coming out of halftime, it's not that they haven't moved the ball. They just have yeah, they haven't missed completed. a tackle, yeah. leads to a touchdown, a couple just so close they're like so close of of being you know 14 to 7 but or you get to fourth and three and that yeah. turns into fourth and eight right right you know they, they've put they've been able to move the football as carson parker is in the shotgun they'll send matthew quatman in motion he'll take the handoff and he is stood up by anthony murphy the air force committed linebacker pushes quatman backwards yeah and he took sierra he just took him with two hands and shoved him out of the way and one got that that is Strength by that uh, linebacker. And he, there's a reason why he's going Division One because that was a pretty impressive play. So second and long upcoming here for the T-Birds. Just don't know. I, I would bet he moves to like a safety or something like that, maybe because I don't know if he's big enough to play a linebacker at that level. Maybe yeah. he is. I don't know. Neat. Uh, the crazy amount that some of those guys can change with yeah. the, they get to a strength and conditioning sure. program but he is certainly an athlete coming off that edge so he's lined up at the bottom of your screen as Parker pressured by Anthony Murphy and now has to roll out he'll turn and fire looking for Gabe Sierra and he's at the 50 yard line but it's over his head and that's an incomplete pass on second long yeah and, and you can see when they know what's coming, they just pin their ears back and go get him. And he's running for his dear life back there. When it's a, 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 a pass play that they they sniffed out, the Hawks have been in the backfield, and, and Parker's been running for his life back there just because the sheer athleticism of them getting around the uh, offensive linemen for the T-Birds. But when it when they can keep them on their toes and guessing. Yeah, when you're not in obvious sure. pass situations, right. so you got to keep them a little more honest. They've been very successful, but that's what happens when you when you run the ball and lose a, a yard on the first down. They know it's passing, and now third and 11, definitely they're going to go back in coverage probably and rush these three guys. Parker fires to Cowan on the screen. He got to the 40-yard line, so gain of just three there on the screen pass. And that'll bring up fourth and long here for the T-Birds. Great. Zhang was a great job by the uh, freshman linebacker. He read that screen all the way and kind of dipped under the potential block and come up and made the play. A heck of a play by him. And really, uh, Bishop Hartley has got just such a mix of young guys. And, uh, you know, Robert Lathan is a freshman. He's got three rushing touchdowns on the day. Joey Zhang is a freshman linebacker. But then, you know, their offensive line is three seniors, two juniors. Their quarterback's a senior. Their running backs are two juniors and a senior. Um, they, they've got some young guys making some contributions, but they're sort of all over the map uh, in, yeah. in the in the experience department. Absolutely. And it's, it's, it's not bad when you can uh, sprinkle in a couple, a couple freshmen there with your experience, and them guys kind of lead them by example and kind of keep them where they need to be. Ball fair caught at the 25-yard line by Joey Wooten. And... Uh, with a 36 to seven lead to Bishop Hartley Hawks. will go to work once again on the offensive side of the football. LCC just needs something positive to happen for them. I can just, just to get some positive energy as a, you can kind of see Coach Poldy has some players gathered around him on the sidelines. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but he's got some guys, he's trying to get them motivated and gets like positive. We're still in this. You got to believe in what we're doing and trust the process, but you know, it's a lot easier to do that when you have some positive things going yeah. your way. Underwood hands off to Layton in the shotgun. Gets through the first level to the second level. Very close to a first down after the nine-yard carry there by Robert Layton. Jacob Lauk is just, <laughs> he is big. Can't buy a holding no, penalty. He, he's got his hands up again looking at the sideline like, what do I got to do to get a holding call? These guys are, two guys are around me the whole time. It's, it's just uh, good, fun to see. Not for him, though. Underwood will fire to Perry oh, this time. Job. He slipped Matthew Quatman and 
Parker was there, I believe. Mylon Cowan's also in on a stop for LCC. But they read that good. They, they knew the swing yeah. pass. They got up there. They had two guys before the last swing pass they had. He was downfield five yards before even a T-bird was anywhere close. He caught it, and there was two T-birds right there. Did a great job reading that screen pass there. Eight minutes to go here in this third quarter. 36-7 to seven the score. Hartley with the lead in the football. Lathan to the left of Underwood in the shotgun on third and one. As he takes a shotgun snap, turns and fires to Wooten in the flats. Quatman able to spin him out of bounds, but not before Wooten picks up the first down. But at least they're attacking and they're flying to the football there. They were sending pressure up the middle. They didn't quite get there, so we had to get rid of it quick. But uh, Quatman was flying from his uh, defensive back position and just was a half step short to get him before he could make the turn up, up for a first down. Knows the football exactly at the 40-yard line. Their own 40-yard line has been Birchfield, the center the son of head coach Brad Birchfield of Bishop Hartley awaits to snap it back to Underwood. Oh, got a guy off sides here. Got a yep. stoppage in play I believe here. the guard is right where the football is, so that should be off sides, I believe. Yes, sir. The official here along this near side saying, I mean, you got something a little, a little wonky here. Yeah. <laughs> the players are looking around like, right. what's going on? What? What, what, what do you mean? So the officials have a conference. Will decide what the penalty is. 36 to 7 the score. To recap the scoring, Bishop Hartley got on the scoreboard first. A two yard touchdown run by the freshman Lathan at the 740 mark of the first quarter. LCC countered a 45 yard touchdown run by Carson Parker, gave them a 7 6 advantage. Then a 30 yard touchdown pass from uh, Peyton Underwood to Joey Wooten made it 14 7, and it's been all Hawks from there, an eight-yard touchdown run by Latham in the second quarter made it 20 to seven. One-yard touchdown run made it 28-7. And then here in the third, a 45-yard touchdown pass from Underwood to Perry made it 36 to seven as the Hartley Hawks go back to work on the offensive side of the football on first and 15 after the penalty against their offensive line. Yep. I think the right guard put his hand on where the ball was. And there's a guy in space again. Rory Ralston has to get past Matthew Quatman. Can't do it. Quatman cuts him down, but it's a big rumble for the fullback in the flats as Quatman brings him down. Quatman paid for that one. He, he won at his legs, but that's a big man coming down the rumbling and stumbling down the field. Quatman kind of got up a little slow on that one. So first down of there for the Hartley Hawks after Rory Ralston, the six foot, 200 pound junior, rumbles into the open field. And it's first and 10 once again for the guys in white. Yeah, I like that play. He's playing kind of a little wing here, tight end position. The guys snuck out and they faked the handoff and he was wide open. Underwood in the shotgun, hands to Lathan. Lathan has plenty of green grass in front of him, and he'll scamper for a 32-yard touchdown. The fourth of the afternoon for Robert Lathan makes it 42-7 to seven Hawks. And he just one cut, put his foot in the ground, turned up field, and was gone. Wow. That was 42 nice. 42-yard scamper by Lathan. His fourth touchdown run here this afternoon. Just a freshman at the 642 mark. I just think... <laughs> their best running back is hurt, and he had 762 yards coming in in four games. <laughs> wow. So the Hawks will line up to go for two. They might have found themselves a one-two, heck of a one-two punch. Lathan on the two-point conversion attempt. Will get to this corner, and he's in to make it 44-7. to seven. We'll step aside. Hawks with a decisive advantage over LCC here on WOSN. This afternoon's scoreboard brought to you by Gethsemane Cemetery. They want to wish the LCC T-Birds good luck in tonight's game. 44-7, T-Birds trail on the Gethsemane Cemetery scoreboard against the Bishop Hartley Hawks. Four rushing touchdowns by Robert Latham this afternoon has the Hawks on, on top. Yeah, he's, just, he's been really, really impressive. I, I, for a freshman, he's... His vision, his you know, his patience. Yeah, I, you know that's it's senior esque right there. But wow, how good is he going to be in three or four more years? Three years, right when he's a senior. The kick, scooped up by Ethan Frankhauser. He'll stumble to the 35-yard line. It's kind of been that kind of day for the T-Birds, right? He had open space and kind of slipped and fell and fell down. 
and he slams the football down in anger. Is you know, he thought he had a little bit of room there, but and that's not the first time we've seen somebody stumble on the turf right. here. Right, I, I don't understand this. I don't know if. I mean, I'm not a. I'm not a science rocket, Scott, but I don't know if uh, you know the the turf gets slicker when it soaks up a little more sun or yeah. hotter. It's, it's it's still a warm day for you know mid September here. It's you know 82 degrees right now. How old is the turf? Three, four years, five. Years? Uh, I think it's two or three years. Yeah, so old. It's not like it's an old, worn out turf. Fairly new yet. Just broken in, right? Yeah. Carson Parker in the shotgun. Tight formation. He'll hand off to Gabe Sierra. Sierra out to the 40-yard line. He's met in the hole. And falls forward for a couple more yards. Gavin Feeney with the tackle. First time he's seen some action, I believe. And got uh, met, met Sierra right in the hole there. And sure did. <laughs> got, got punished for it. So a gain of about five and a half there on first down. And that's the those are the kind of plays that LCC needs on first down. It's, it's just those the, the, the stuff that's moving you forward and not putting you in second long or third and long. Right. And also it it gives you opportunity. You got the whole playbook and you're you're you can still run or you can pass. And this has to keep the, the Hawks back on their feet. They got to see what's coming first. Sierra, the handoff again. Gets back to the line of scrimmage after going back about five yards or so. Which, uh, the offensive line shoved back on that left side. He had to kind of bubble out a little bit, but got back to the line of scrimmage at least. Yeah. Um, that's uh, number. F that's uh, Zhang, the freshman again, uh, along with uh, Ralston. Came from their linebacker positions. And got a few backups in here. So third and four here for the T-Birds. As the clock continues to tick, 44-7 to seven to score. LCC trails. Parker in the shotgun once again by himself with a bunch formation. And Ethan Frankhauser in motion. Parker will turn and fire to Frankhauser in the flat. Tries to barrel through a defender. He stood up. Feeney in on the stop. Great job by Martin Fueller there, Xavier. He held his ground, the 5'11", uh, 165 pound um, junior. So a couple of new faces on the field for the Hartley Hawks, and that'll bring up fourth and short, and it looks like the T-Birds are gonna punt it away. Yeah, you just can't, you can't give this high-powered offense a short field. You have to, you have to make them work yeah. and, you know, a lot of the fans are not happy with that, but that this is the right call. Like definitely, you've got to you got to pin them deep and maybe get a turnover and get your offense maybe in the red zone. Parker sends it away, a high end over end kick that's caught at the 21 yard line, and that is where the Hawks will start their third drive of the half. See if they uh, go with some. Second teamer on, uh, looks like they are bringing in. Yeah, it's a, a lot of new guys coming in here on for uh, offense here for the Hawks. That's a whole host of new Hawks on yes, the field. Yes. And when you already, you know, uh, Robert Lathan was already, you know, the second <laughs> second running back uh, a four touchdown day, uh, getting a couple of new faces in on the, the field. So we'll see, it looks like CJ Bartney, unless Matt Gaelic. Matt Gaelic is the new quarterback for the Hartley Hawks, number 17. He's a freshman, a 5'11", 170 pound freshman. He'll take the snap and hand off. To I believe that's Brandon Hambrick on yeah. the carry. You can see they're not getting that same push as those other offensive linemen. Again, it's good to see that the coaches you know, getting these guys in in the third quarter and getting them some quality varsity time here, or, or at least varsity action. Well, and especially, you know, you made the two-hour trip from Columbus. Yeah, you're, you're, you're coming because you want to play. Right, right. And that helps build the program, helps keep the guys interested and like, look, if, you know, yes, I know I'm not first team, but I'll still get in. Hambrick with the carry for Bishop Hartley. He spun down. Good job believe that's Gianni McKee on the stop. Buddy Bryant playing a little defense today, and he makes the stop for the T-Birds. 
Well, I thought I thought it was Johnson. I was going to say uh, you, from this far, know, 76, 78. It's, it's all the same, isn't it? Yeah. But that's what that they even confused the uh, PA announcer. So under a minute to go here in this third quarter. Hamrick gets another carry. Oh, no, this is a new running back, Bryson Winbush, with the carry. He's brought down on the track, and then, a, uh, unfortunately for him, a T-Bird got tripped up behind him and landed on top of him. So Bryson Winbush, who's a 5'8", 155-pound sophomore, hits the track pretty hard and then gets piled on from there. <laughs> Poor guy. It's a little brief fourth and about four for the Hawks. I think this will probably, they'll let this uh, go to probably get us to the fourth quarter, I would assume. I believe you're correct, Scott. We've played three quarters of action, 44 to seven. The score, Bishop Hartley leads the LCC Thunderbirds fourth quarter action coming up when we return here on WOSN. <laughs> Scoreboard this afternoon brought to you by Get 70 Cemetery. They want to wish the LCC T-Birds good luck in tonight's ball game. 44 to 7 the score. Bishop Hartley, the lead over the LCC Thunderbirds. This is the fourth quarter about to begin. I'm Garrett C. Wright, joined alongside Scott Mag, and we're bringing you all the action here today from Spartan Stadium. And the Hartley Hawks have their uh, second team offense in and faced with fourth and a couple. And it looks like they are going to keep the offense on the field, mm. try to pick up the first down. Yeah. Interesting call here. Bryson Winbush, the running back to the left of Matt Gaelic. So we're gonna stop in play. Timeout LCC, I think. I believe you're correct. Not sure the strategy of the timeout. Well, I unless you just see something well, maybe you had, had planned on the punt unit being out yeah, there. Maybe and they had a punt unit out and they kind of because a few guys are going off and well, the guys are going in, so maybe they were thinking it was a punt and then had to line up because they weren't going to punt. And Coach Pauly said, uh, we better be get our defense guys out there. <laughs> you don't, don't want to be out there, you know, set the yeah. punt unit out, the punt return unit out on fourth and four when the offense comes out. It, um, you know, you've got a couple of guys in this wearing numbers, wearing numbers in the 70s uh, yeah. that you don't want Playing trying deep. to cover wide receivers yeah, or anything right. like that. So now that they have taken the timeout, oh, that is still the offense. Is there's just two running backs in the backfield with Gaelic. Fourth and four. Gaelic will hand off to Winbush. Tries to turn the corner. Got a penalty flag on the play, a couple of them. He got the first down. We'll see what the result of the flag is. Might be a hold out there or clip, maybe. They've got face mask. Bryson Winbush picked up the first down. I think they're going to add some. You have a face mask against the LCC T Birds. Yeah. I think clock is supposed to stop on a penalty, I think, but still running. I won't tell anyone if you want. <laughs> so the ball to 38 yard line now. It's first and 10 as LCC starts to remove a couple of their defensive starters. Jacob Block coming out of the ball game. I got something there that has to be. <laughs> Saw, I believe, number 57, who's down on our roster. Stand uh, straight up. Yeah. He, uh, it was almost as if he knew. Oh, shoot. Uh, they're gonna, up, they're gonna get me. Yep. So that'll push the Hawks back five yards and make it first and 15. As Gaelic's in the shotgun with Bryson Winbush to his right. Gaelic will keep it himself off right tackle. Short gain there. Yeah, gain of about two or three. It didn't get back to the original line of scrimmage. So under 10 minutes to go on the Guest Seventy Cemetery scoreboard here in this ball game. LCC two and two on the season, and Bishop Hartley one and three. 
T-Birds had turned the football over eight times the last two games out, and that was something Scott Palti had said to us, hey, we've got to make sure we stop doing that. They, they haven't they threw an interception today, but for the most part, they, they've done a pretty good job of hanging, hanging on to the football. Yeah, just they just been a half step short all night on out and making space, and <laughs> Coach ain't happy he's yeah. out there. Kind Brad Birchfield, even you know, in a 44-7 game, he's not happy that uh, uh, there, there was a miscommunication there. He, he was not thrilled with the uh, with the Execution the offense man. there. And, and he, you know, it's the second team offense. You're winning by 37. Uh, he didn't care. He he called timeout basically to go out there, uh, say a couple words to his guys, and send them right back out. Right. He kind of ripped on a couple guys, and then he walked back over to the sidelines. He's happy. He had to get it, something off his chest. Right. One of those times. Where you kind of forget that this is the middle of a game where like it's just practice. You're like, right. hold on. And then you right. go out there, uh -huh. tell them what they need to do, and go back to the sideline. I'm like, oh, wait, yeah, this is a game. I just called timeout. <laughs> right. uh, we got about 30 seconds more to talk if you guys got anything you'd like to <laughs> right. converse about here. Right. So LCC takes the opportunity to talk some things over there on the defensive side of the ball as they've got second and 13 lined up here for the Bishop Hartley Hawks. Is Matt Gaelic, the 5'11 freshman in a quarterback. Yeah, Coach Birchfeld probably didn't go out there and say, hey, where do you guys want to go to eat after the game? No. I'm sure that wasn't one of the things he talked about. Michael Young lined up behind Gaelic in a shotgun. And he'll take the handoff, run straight ahead. Swallowed up by a couple of T-Birds, even Frank Hauser in on the stop for the, for the birds. Looks like we got to the original line of scrimmage there, or very close to it. Well, third and 10 upcoming for the visitors. With nine minutes to go in the ball game. Really, this is one of those, this is a building uh, building block for the Bishop Hartley Hawks that started the yep. season, you know, one and three, uh, but a tough non-conference schedule. And it's a nice measuring stick for LCC to know, hey, we're, we're, you know, we hung for a while with a team that's probably going to make the playoffs in Division Four. Yeah, <laughs> and probably make some noise in the playoffs, too. Carry again by they, Michael Young. They got some players, and they, got, they do some things that uh, other teams are going to have a really hard time you know, they get those athletes in space, and and like I said, that offensive line, those guys are athletes too. They're big guys, but they can move, and they can do a lot of good things. Uh, it, they're they're going to be tough to, to stop. Bishop Harley has a very uh, almost Jerry Cooper-esque offense where there's, yeah. you know, uh, two dozen formations in about six plays. <laughs> yeah. They're not running right. uh, too many different things, but you got to line up correctly, and if you don't, they're, they're going to make you pay for it. And I, right. that was one of the things that LCC was worried about on fourth and short here as Gaelic's in the shotgun. He'll hand off to Michael Young. He picked up the first down uh -oh. and more. He's off to the races looking for a 40, a 54-yard touchdown run. And Michael Young crosses the goal line to make it 50-7. to seven. The senior gets a big touchdown run there for the Hawks. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously he's a team favorite because every one of those guys were running down, down the field with him and celebrating. So he must be a, a, a team favorite there. So with 7.35 to go, Michael Young, a 5'11", 195-pound senior, scampers for 54 yards to extend the lead out to 50-7. to seven. Hawks will keep that second team offense on the field to attempt a two-point conversion. Yeah, I think they attempted one extra point and it didn't go so well and they haven't yeah, tried yeah, it again. After that, they said, nope, we're, right, we're just going to go for two every time. Been pretty successful. Gaelic's going to keep it himself and they're successful once again. The two-point conversion yeah. is good to make it 52 to 7. We'll step aside. Bishop Hartley the advantage here on WOSF. Fifty-two to seven, the score here in the fourth quarter as Bishop Hartley has the advantage over the LCC Thunderbirds. As LCC going to drop to two and three on the season, and Bishop Hartley going to move to two and three on the year. As you know, and probably a much more enjoyable ride home for the uh, Bishop Hartley Hawks than the T-Birds. Yeah, uh, it's a it's a quite the trip here for uh, Bishop Hartley from. Columbus and give them credit to come here to, yeah, to uh, be willing to travel. Well, and t speaking about travel, the Hawks, their first eight games of the season are on the road. Yeah. I'm not sure how that uh, schedule worked out, but 
the first eight games of the season. Uh, that's a <laughs> you're wearing your white jerseys an awful, yeah, right. awful lot there. Uh, they do have two home games to end the season, but you look at their schedule. Uh, they are they were at Big Walnut, at Harvest Prep, at Canal Winchester, at Cincinnati McNicholas, at Lima Central Catholic, at Columbus to Sales, at Cleveland Villa Angeles St. Joe, at St. Charles, and then they finish the season against Kip, Kip, Kip Columbus and Bishop Watterson, but eight straight road games to start the season. Yeah. Boy, that uh, athletic department must have a heck of a travel budget. Uh, apparently, I'm sure they travel. Uh, if you're going to come from Columbus to Lima, <laughs> you're hopefully not riding on a big old yellow bus. Right. Well, not only that, but uh, there was a host of parents out there uh, tailgating before the game. They had a heck of a spread. I bought one over there and said, hey, hey. <laughs> you got any extra? Right. What do you, what do you, what do you got growing <laughs> up over here? Right. Smelled good. They had a big spread, a bunch of people out there. So they make a day of it. They know how to tailgate, I guess. So the second team offense for the T-Birds now on the field is Dakota Gerdeman on the field, as is Mikey Cooper. It's good that at least they get a shot to get out there. They practice all week just like the other guys, yeah. and you know they deserve their shot too. So the T-Birds await the snap. So send a man in motion and hand it off to Dakota Gerdeman. And he's tripped up from behind. We'll call him down. Gavin kind of popped out a little bit. Gavin Feeney on the stop for Bishop Hartley. <clears throat> as Mikey Cooper lines up as the LCC quarterback. Going to the backfield by J.J. Schneiders. As the T-Birds content to take plenty of time off the clock. Schneiders at quarterback. Takes a snap and will keep it himself. He's got a couple of guys blocking for him. And he shoved out of bounds just before the 45-yard line. Let's see these freshmen getting in there. Xavier Martin Fuller on the stop for the Bishop Hartley Hawks. Clock continues to tick. 52 to 7 the score on the S7A Cemetery scoreboard. Third and five upcoming here for LCC. You know, you, you're looking at all these guys out here playing now. These guys are all used to playing during the daytime. Yeah. Right? yeah. Either a Saturday morning game or a Monday afternoon yeah. game because of the JV or a freshman contest. And it's good to see that they're out here on a Saturday getting some varsity reps. And it's kind of nice to probably play in front of more fans than they're accustomed to playing. In yeah, front of. absolutely. And J.J. Schneider's back at a shotgun for the T-Birds. Takes the high snap and is able to give it off to Mikey Cooper. Ooh. Cooper shoves ahead to the just shy of the 50-yard line. It's going to be fourth and short there for the Birds. Got to snap it at least one more time. Yeah, I think they take their time and go for it again. So fourth and four upcoming for the Birds as J.J. Schneiders will turn and look to the sideline. You're right, Scott, it's nice to get, you know, some guys, some varsity experience at um, any time you can take it because you're hoping these guys are playing for you on Friday nights and Saturday afternoons here in the coming years. Right, absolutely. And, and all that, you can kind of see what you got and, and um, you know, give them a taste, keep them one to stick around and keep one to play. Hopefully give them a first down here and get some more plays. Schneiders got the first down. Hopefully it is a first down. It is. Yeah. Might have jumped the gun there, but it's a good job. It's <laughs> good. One more play upcoming for the Birds. As Schneiders checks the wristband. Yeah. The freshman in the shotgun with three receivers to his right. 
Hands off to Cooper. He's got a little room to run out to the 45-yard line. Hard. Slips another tackle. Almost got past one more out to the 40-yard line. And that'll do it for this afternoon's ball game. LCC falls to Bishop Hartley 52-7. to But uh, final thoughts and takeaways from you this afternoon, Scott? Again, this 52-7, to if you never didn't watch the game, you see that score, you're like, wow. But LCC was close, like we talked about all broadcast. They just... You know, they were half step slow in the space, and the one those athletes got an open area, they knew what to do with it and got to the zone. And, you know, offensively, LCC moved the football. They just never could capitalize. Something would happen, a penalty, or they would have a, a miscue, or they'd get a loss of down. You know, they'd drive, 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 and then they would get uh, lose a couple yards, and it'd be like second and 12. And, you know, when they are in. Uh, designed like pass they, that the other the defense knew they were going to pass yeah. and they struggled a little bit but when they could keep them guessing they removed the football so there was some good things to take out away from this and there's a, a couple of things that they can go back and look at the tape and, and especially tackling in space they kind of struggled a little bit uh, but again like we said earlier Hartley's going to be in the playoffs and they're a division four team so there are three three tiers up higher than you and and these guys are good and there's a reason um, they they're good year after year because they got guys that can play football well Bishop Hartley they, they've won three straight three not three straight but they've won three state championships in the last uh, I think eight years or something like that. This, that that's a good football program that you lost to today but uh, nonetheless a 52 to 7 loss for the LCC Thunderbirds today against the Bishop Hartley Hawks that'll do it for our, our broadcast here at Spartan Stadium for our fantastic WOSN crew this afternoon. And Scott Magum here at Sea Wright saying so long. The final score, the final time. Bishop Hartley 52, LCC 7 here on WOSN.